continuing on with our video series of the health assessment head to toe exam. We now are moving on to the posterior and lateral chest exam assessment. I had the patient turn to the side and again is with us. I'm gonna again start out by washing my hands. I will again encourage you to follow along on the head to toe grade rubric that is listed and you will be able to actually see what I'm doing, follow down. So posterior chest, the things that we're looking for, again, upon inspection. What am I looking for? Normally, a patient would not have a bra on. You want to, again, expose the area, but for this purposes, she's going to wear a sports bra. So inspection of the skin, looking again for any open lesions, uh, cuts, bruises, things like that that you want to inspect. You also want to inspect uh, shoulder height to make sure it's symmetrical and even. You want to inspect both scapula. Also want to have her put her hands across the front of her chest and hold them that way. Can you do that? Put your hands across the front of your chest. And it kind of widens that scapula area out so you're kind of able to see, uh, again, are they equal? Are they symmetrical? You're again looking at the final column um, as it goes down, again, inspecting everything. Watching her breathe, you know, is she using some of those accessory muscles to breathe upon inspection? She is not, but those are the things that you'd want to notice if she is. So that's your inspection. So you then move on to palpation. Again, a palpation, you are using your hands. The thing for posterior chest that you are assessing for are the normal lumps and bumps, but also crepitus, which is subcutaneous air that you would feel with your fingers upon palpation. So again, you're going to want to do a good palpation, really feeling all the areas of her posterior chest. Any tenderness on that? Nope. Okay. I also, at this time, would inspect C7. Uh, I would have her bend her head forward, identify C7, which is the most prom prominent um, cervical site there, which hers is very visible. So I would, again, inspect that, palpate that, any tenderness with that. Nope. Okay. So you can put your head back up. So that's the inspection and palpation of posterior. We would then move on to percussion. My recommendation for percussion, I know the technique is to use your fingers, but what I have found in my practice is using a percussion hammer or a reflex hammer helps elicit a sound that's louder so you're able to actually hear if you're over bone, you know, the changes in tone that you're looking for when you percuss. Again, percussion is producing a noise depending on what you're actually percussing over, over any bone, it's going to be a dull sound. Over lung fields, uh, you're going to hear a resonant sound, which is a normal finding. Um, and when you get ready to do this percussion, you want to remember to start up high on the shoulders because there's lung tissue, tissue above the scapula. It starts up here. You want to stay away from the scapula area um, to percuss because, again, it's over bone. It's not going to tell you anything. And then as you work your way down with percussion, you want to try to get in between the ribs because if you percuss over the ribs, again, going to produce a dull sound. So you want to try to percuss over the space in between the ribs. So, and to percuss, it's just you put your finger on. And then you make your way down, compare the sides. Again, should be a resonant sound that you're hearing. Hopefully you can hear that on the video. Again, you want to continue down. Remember, you're staying away from trying to get in between the ribs. You kind of want to go off to the side as the ribs run along there. So you kind of palpate in between to try to stay in between. Again, her ribs will end about here, so you want to make sure you're covering um, the entire space. Okay, so percussion is good, resonant sound um, that I'm listening for. 
Another test that I'm going to do is chest expansion. This basically allows me to measure as she takes in a deep breath how much her chest expands. Is it expand equally? Um, I'm able to measure. So to do that, I go down to about T10, T11, and again, um, her ribs are going to end down here. That kind of gives you a baseline of where T10, T11, T12 is. I'm going to go down to midline here, kind of pinch some of her skin together. And then have her take in a big deep breath. And as you can see, you let it out. And then do it again. As you can see, my hands move um, equally apart. There's one or the other's not moving um, unequal. And the length that it moved apart is five to 10 centimeters, which is a normal finding for lung expansion. So that is um, uh, chest expansion we've percussed. Then we're going to move on to auscultation. I'm going to be listening for breath sounds, listening for any adventitious uh, breath sounds. Again, diaphragm of your stethoscope you're going to start out with. And you want to make sure you're comparing size as you go, um, having the patient take a deep breath in and out. You want to listen for the entire uh, respiratory cycle, have them breathe in and out before you move your stethoscope. I want to remind everybody that as you do this, having a patient depend on the patient's condition. If they're having to take a lot of deep breaths in and out, they may become dizzy. So you want to check with your patient to make sure they're tolerating this okay about halfway through or if you notice um, any changes because it can be, it's a lot of uh, deep breathing in and out. So again, you're going to start above the scapula area to, to listen to that uh, lung tissue on the back here. All right, have you taken a deep breath in and out when my stethoscope goes on? Are you doing okay? And you'll notice that as I came down, again, staying away from the scapula area because, again, it, it's over bone, so you're not able to get an accurate uh, reflection of breath sounds. As I came down, I also went way out to the um, posterior bases here. That's really important because as the lungs come down, they do kind of come to a point on the side. So it's really important to make sure that you not just listen straight down here, but you also get out on the sides and listen to those breath sounds as well. While we're right here, um, we're also going to take the opportunity to listen to her right middle lobe. As you remember that the uh, right lung has three lobes versus the left having two. So to be able to really accurately assess that right side, what I'm going to have the patient do is turn a little bit this way. A little bit more in this way. I'm going to have her raise her right arm up over her head. And again, remember the placement of that right lobe. It's, it's kind of a triangle shaped here in the middle. So to assess, truly assess that, you want to assess in three different spots, listening, uh, having her take a full respiratory cycle. Breathe in for me, and out. Okay, 
So that's the right middle lobe, um, an accurate assessment of that. Again, as we have emphasized, you want to make sure that you're not using the stethoscope over any clothing at any time at all because it definitely interferes with your ability to correctly assess. So do not make sure you're not listening over a Johnny or anything that the patient has on. You will see people do that, but that is not the correct way. While I have Anna on her side, I'm also going to take the opportunity to check her AP diameter, which is her anterior posterior diameter. And what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for the side diameter for her, and roughly it's, it's an eyeball here, but I'm just kind of using my hands. So this is how wide. And then I'm going to have her swing back around and roughly taking a peek at, you know, her anterior posterior was about that wide and um, assessing across the anterior. So it should be a two to one ratio. There should be two to the one on the side and that's her AP diameter. Where this becomes important is a patient with COPD that develops a barrel chest, that AP diameter will be abnormal. So when you have the patient on the side assessing the right, right lung, it's a good idea to assess the AP diameter then. 